We noticed the fire on the work floor. What am I feeling? Yeah. I don't know what to say. You always think of these things, you just hope they don't happen to you, I guess. I mean, we was lucky we didn't get killed. I mean. Hell, if we'd have been 10 feet over there, it blew concrete right out all across the street. To the lay person, and many in the industry, disasters of this magnitude may be new and difficult to comprehend. These scenes were taken minutes after 12 explosions rocked a terminal elevator in Corpus Christi, Texas. 32 persons were injured, many seriously, and more importantly, nine people were killed. On that fateful day several years ago, it was business as usual. It was a Tuesday. A routine day in the off-season. Workers uh, waiting a shift change were in the yard of the portside elevator. Others were sacking grain and unloading railroad cars. Business as usual. Then a tremendous series of dust explosions occurred. In fact, the experts say there were as many as 12 of them in two minutes. The primary explosion triggered a series of devastating blasts that ripped apart the reinforced concrete storage facility. The fiery blast traveled vertically and horizontally throughout this five and a half million bushel concrete elevator and continued throughout the gallery and into the C house and the A house. And when the smoke cleared and all the people were accounted for five days later, the consequences of that disaster were finally known. The physical damage amounted to $25 million, and nine people killed, 32 injured. For the industry, the number of insurance claims and settlements were the highest ever, estimated to exceed $100 million. It's hard to believe, but this harmless-looking powder has the power to literally rip apart giant elevators. It chooses its targets without any regard to the type of building or the sex or age of its occupants. The 1970s and 80s saw an acceleration in grain industry disasters in the United States. In 1976, the nation experienced 16 major grain dust explosions 
that left in its aftermath 19 deaths, 82 injuries, and the worst property damage ever witnessed. In 1977, a grain dust explosion destroyed an export terminal near New Orleans, injuring nine and killing 36. The most deaths in that decade from a single disaster. As you can see here, the top half of the head house was blown away by that explosion. Five days later, a major dust explosion occurred in a grain terminal in Galveston, Texas. 18 dead, 22 injured. This eight-story flour mill was hit by lightning, injuring five, one seriously when he was caught in the direct path of a fireball moving across the roll floor. Five workers were killed and 24 persons injured in 1982 when a series of explosions and fire devastated a two million bushel old wooden terminal elevator in Council Bluffs, Iowa. And two explosions ripped through a riverside elevator killing five and injuring three others in April of 1988 at Joliet, Illinois. The facility was a total loss. Not all grain dust explosions occur in the United States. In 1982, a series of explosions in the elevator of a barley malt plant in Metz, France, destroyed the factory, killing 12 and injuring 5. Serious explosions have occurred in Russia, Germany, Morocco, Spain, Argentina, Thailand, Japan, and Canada. Don't be misled into believing that it's only the big grain terminals that are ravaged by grain dust explosions. In the 1980s, 77% occurred in country elevators located in the Midwest grain producing states. Small elevators can also blow up. Many are made of wood and they burn in a spectacular fashion. This deadly dust originates at the farm and increases each time grain is handled throughout the marketing system. A majority of the grain storage buildings in the United States are over 20 years old, and that would lead you to believe that that's where most of the problems occur. But some of the worst dust explosions have blown apart relatively new concrete buildings. Because of the way they were constructed in the 1950s and 60s and 70s, the concrete slip form elevators, feed mills, and flour mills had virtually no venting protection in the way of windows or explosion vent panels. It's hard to believe that this grain dust can cause so much damage. It may not look like it, but under the right conditions, this dust creates far more havoc than dynamite. Again, make no mistake. Grain dust is explosive, and it must be treated with respect. A grain dust explosion is, in simple terms, the almost instantaneous burning of very small grain dust particles in a confined space, resulting in extreme heat and pressure. To help you avoid having such explosions in your plant, here's some basic information that could save your life, your co-worker's life, the facility where you work, and your job. You need seven things or events to happen at a precise moment to have a grain dust explosion. First, you need oxygen or air. Second, a fuel source. In this case, it's the dust. Third, the dust must be mixed or suspended in the air. Fourth, a minimum concentration of dust is needed. Fifth, there must be an ignition source. Sixth, the dust needs to be dry. And finally, all of the elements must be in a confined or closed-in space where pressure will build up. Now this is important. If you remove any one of these seven elements or parts, you have just prevented a dust explosion. Now let's simulate a dust explosion, keeping in mind the seven elements. Dust, which is laying at rest on the floor, on overhead beams, clinging to the walls and on ledges, could have four of the seven elements. At this point, it's not much of a threat. Even adding an ignition source, 
one of the seven elements doesn't ignite the dust. In this simple demonstration, we'll see just how explosive ordinary grain dust can be when all of the seven elements come together. First, we have an open container that has an ignition source, the dust itself, and an air source that will agitate or put the dust into suspension. When we mix the dust in an open space and ignite it, we get a flash fire. Now we'll repeat the demonstration, but this time we'll confine the area by simply enclosing the container with ordinary paper. Now watch what happens when we ignite the same amount of agitated dust as before, only this time it's within an enclosed space. Let's view this experiment on a larger scale as conducted by a French laboratory. Compressed air was used to create a huge dust cloud from three kilograms or about two and a half gallons of grain dust. As you saw in the smaller demonstration, when you create the same dust cloud and ignite it with an ignition source, you get a flash fire, but no explosion. The same amount of dust is again loaded into the chamber and the openings sealed. Upon ignition you have a primary explosion with a very dangerous fireball being released. To show how a secondary explosion occurs, dust is placed outside the explosion chamber. You don't want this to happen where you work. Remember it takes seven things. Air, dust, in suspension, a minimum concentration, ignition, dry dust, all in a confined space. Another point to remember is that dust from any organic material will explode under the right conditions. Some dusts are more explosive than others. This partly explains the massive devastation caused by grain dust explosions to any facility. The other important factor is how strong various building materials are. Ordinary window glass can only stand a maximum static pressure of one half to one pound per square inch. Conventional studded wood construction, one to two pounds. And reinforced concrete, two to eight pounds per square inch, depending on thickness and reinforcement. Research in the U.S. and Europe have shown that grain dust explosions can exceed static pressures exceeding 100 pounds per square inch. As we've said, exceptionally large static pressures can be created by grain dust explosions. But what's really important here is the amount of time it takes to generate that pressure. Dust explosions create an extremely rapid pressure rise, and it's this unusually quick pressure increase which is very difficult to control. The finer or smaller the dust particles, the easier they are to ignite and the faster they burn. Remember, the drier the grain dust, the more dangerous. History has shown us that explosions have occurred during thunderstorms. The critical element is not how dry the air is, but how dry the grain and its dust. A minimum concentration of dust suspended in air is needed for an explosion. The accepted amount is 0.04 ounces, or 1.13 grams per cubic foot. If this amount of dust were sifted evenly onto one square foot of floor, it would barely cover the surface. That's far less than the thickness of one U.S. quarter. And this is a minimum. Anything beyond this can be more dangerous. Now in a typical storage or processing facility, you've got plenty of air. And when the plant's operating, there's likely to be some dust in suspension, especially in and around receiving and conveying systems and processing equipment. And in all facilities, there are many potential sources of ignition. Let me show you graphically why a grain dust explosion is so dangerous, especially the secondary explosions. Suppose you have an ignition source here at the head pulley due to a leg choke and the belt friction caused a fire. The initial explosion shoots fire down the leg. 
temperatures can well exceed 2,000 degrees. A tremendous pressure wave is created that ruptures the leg housing. It shakes the surrounding parts or the entire building and the fine dust particles go into suspension. Now fireballs travel all over in a matter of seconds. The dust-air mixture is exploding in the work areas, in the gallery or Texas house, bins, spouts, tunnels, and receiving areas. Explosions do occur. What's important is that we do everything we can to minimize the injuries, loss of lives, and property damage. Here are some things that management and employees working together can do. Management has to be involved. They have to take leadership in providing training, supervision, and proper safety equipment. Everyone needs to be aware that grain dust is explosive. To prevent the primary explosion, your plant probably has or will have safety equipment such as motion sensors, belt alignment sensors, heat sensors, and magnets. For your safety, a good preventative maintenance program can be carried out 365 days a year to minimize housekeeping problems and eliminate ignition sources. You know, the old saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it, but I think if it looks like it's going to break down, better get on it and get it fixed right away. It doesn't do any good to put all kinds of safety equipment in this building if the equipment is not being maintained and kept properly operating. Things like bearing monitors and, and motion detectors, if they're not working properly, they're not doing their job right. And it leads to people ignoring alarms when they go off. And, and it is of the utmost importance that if you're going to put that equipment in, that that equipment be maintained and operational working. Good housekeeping must be followed to help reduce the secondary explosions that are far more dangerous than the primary explosion. Uh, fuel and uh, ignition source are the two things we can control in a grain explosion. You can't have it too clean. Uh, we believe that we should clean our work areas every day. You, you feel comfortable working in a nice, clean atmosphere, and it's also a very safe atmosphere. Other steps that have been taken to make a facility a safer and more healthful place to work include moving operating people out and away from the building and automating the elevator operation, controlling the amount of dust in suspension through a pneumatic air collection system, or using oil to treat the grain moving the bucket elevator outside because if it explodes it minimizes the possibility of a secondary explosion or of getting someone hurt. Eliminating the headhouse, gallery and tunnel. Using incline belts, enclosed belts or conveyors. Installing vent panels on outside legs and buildings and installing explosion suppression devices at high-risk locations. In 1987, OSHA, the U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration, issued safety regulations for grain handling facilities. You should become familiar with these regulations and how they apply to your firm. We focus on the grain elevator because both historical data and current statistics show that most of the dust explosions have occurred in grain storage rather than processing facilities. 67% have been in grain elevators. 16% in feed mills, 3% in corn processing plants, 2% in flour mills, and 12% in all others. It's been very difficult to determine where the primary explosion occurred or what the source was in nearly half of the explosions because of the devastation that occurs and the need to rescue personnel, recover bodies, extinguish fires, and salvage grain from further smoke and water damage. It's recognized that the bucket elevator is the most dangerous piece of equipment in grain storage and processing facilities. When operating, dust is in suspension. And in nearly all cases, researchers have found this concentration to be above recognized minimum explosive limits. Major sources of ignition in a dust explosion have been identified as welding or cutting, an overheated bearing, fire, primarily from a choked leg, improper inspection lamps, electrical malfunctions, and foreign material. 
It's important to follow required procedures when welding or cutting and to include the use of a permit issued by plant management. You can't be too careful. Make sure outside contractors and maintenance employees are aware that static dust can be clinging to the inside of spouts, leg housings, enclosed conveyors, bins, and machinery. If dislodged during or immediately after welding or cutting and comes in contact with a hot metal surface, it can and has caused a primary explosion, then secondary explosions. Overheated bearings mounted flush against or partially inside the leg or conveyor housing are another common source of ignition. Proper lubrication of bearings is extremely important. Don't over lubricate. Another major ignition source has been fires caused by a choked leg or an overloaded conveyor belt. Friction between the slipping belt and drive pulley can cause a fire in seconds. So avoid choking the leg or overloading the belt by proper feed control and no jogging. To help prevent a fire and an explosion, make sure there's proper lagging on the head or drive pulley to ensure maximum grip and pull on the loaded belt. New technology in the form of motion sensors and belt alignment sensors offer great safety. They're designed to detect both belt slowdown due to slipping and friction caused by misalignment, thereby helping to prevent a fire or explosion. There's also one other important source of ignition for fires. Smoking in a plant. Don't permit it. Electrical equipment can also ignite grain and grain dust in several ways. For example, here's something that should never be used around grain storage or processing plants. Be sure to use only approved extension or handheld lights. All lights, switches, and plug-ins should be of the approved type for the area where installed. And you should have none of these. Making sure all electrical equipment is properly grounded will further minimize the danger from an electrical malfunction to personnel and equipment. That includes proper grounding of the whole building against lightning strikes. Check your equipment and plant today. There's great concern about metal, large stones, pieces of wood and mortar, entering plants in the grain or processed material, and damaging equipment or causing explosions. Proper grating can eliminate the entry of stones and wood into the elevator receiving pit. Magnets can help prevent ferrous metal from getting into your processing equipment. This provides additional protection from metal objects causing sparks or becoming heated from friction. So clean all of the magnets regularly as part of your maintenance program. A good maintenance program is essential in controlling dust and along with housekeeping shouldn't be put off to slack periods. We have a regular written housekeeping plan that we follow whereby a certain portion of the elevator is cleaned every day. We don't treat the wooden elevator any much different than the concrete or the steel with the exception of a little bit more attention paid to making sure that it is clean. Our primary uh, thing is just a good old broom and lots of good hard work. And that's in my estimation is the best way to keep an elevator clean. Leaking dust is easy to see and when you do see it, stop it. It can save time and labor in housekeeping. It takes away the fuel for those devastating secondary explosions which can save your life. The broom is still the most common cleaning tool. While the vacuum cleaning system has the safety advantage of removing more of the fine explosive particles and is more widely used in processing plants. One practice that should be eliminated whenever possible is the use of compressed air to blow the dust off equipment and overhead ledges and pipes. Many firms are using a well-designed dust system with bag filters to capture the dust. It's your responsibility that it's maintained and works properly. As mentioned earlier, the use of edible oil sprayed on a moving stream of grain is a relatively new method being used to keep dust from becoming airborne in grain elevators and feed mills. Painting your equipment and the inside of the building with a slick surface paint 
can reduce the amount of dust sticking to the walls, which further reduces the danger. Safety training is necessary because lack of knowledge and interest breeds complacency, and that causes carelessness. There should be regular safety meetings for all employees to discuss problems, hazards, and emergency plans, to acquaint new personnel with policies, procedures, facilities, equipment, and for individual employees when they're assigned new job responsibilities. I guess I believe, in, and I believe our company believes, that safety is an attitude rather than uh, something that you give to someone once a month in a meeting. And to establish that attitude, you've got to make the employee believe that he's a part of a team and that he can contribute to that team. All in all, uh, safety is an everyday, every hour type of activity that every employee should be concerned with. Safety is everyone's business. It's your life your job. And if you see something wrong, report it immediately to your supervisor. No one is planning on having an accident. However, accidents do happen, and each plant is required to have its own emergency action plan. A simple yet comprehensive plan needs to be developed and written down. Every person in your plant, including the office staff, should have a part in developing the plan. By doing so, each one will be familiar with the plan and find it easier to respond to an emergency situation. You never know when or how they will occur. Dust explosions have occurred in all months of the year, all days of the week, and often after working hours. As recorded by a television camera at 8.30 p.m. January 1988 at the Mobile, Alabama State Docks Port Elevator. Four firemen fighting fires on the same floor miraculously survived this explosion. And in any emergency plan, it's imperative that there be cooperation with your local fire department, EMTs, hospital, police, and other supporting agencies. Your plant should have two emergency notebooks available at all times with important telephone numbers, personnel rosters, and other pertinent data for the situation at hand. One book should be easily available in the office, and the second kept at the manager's home. A good plan does work. It's, it's really important for every employee to know things about disaster procedures, even the simple little things like where to congregate afterwards so everyone can be accounted for. Um, a person never knows on a given day who is going to be around and you never know who will have to call the fire department or ambulance. An alternative communications plan is needed since phone service is often knocked out. This could be a CB radio in a truck or a car. We know that we can minimize the likelihood of dust explosions by following recommended safety practices. You can't do much about the air, but you certainly can do something about the dust and ignition sources. We don't want you to become part of scenes like these. It's uh, very difficult when, when guys that you've worked with for seven, eight years are, are down in there. You're the one that's got to go get them out. I urge the management, boards of directors, and all employees do everything they can to see to it that things like this never happen again. For more information on safety regulations, codes, advice on equipment, safe operating procedures and training, use your insurance company loss prevention personnel and sales representatives, national trade associations, your state trade associations, state safety and health departments, or state cooperative extension services. They have all the information and are familiar with current government regulations and National Fire Protection Association codes and standards.